Shavnam Diaries Podcast Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna everyone, we are continuing the Bhagavad Gita as it is, the book by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Chapter 18, The Perfection of Renunciation, Text 74. Sanjaya Vacha Ityaham Vasudevasya Parthasya Cha Mahatmanaha Samvadam Imama Shraosham Adbutam Ro Maharshanam Sanjaya said Thus I have heard the conversation of two great souls Krishna and Arjuna and so wonderful is that message that my hair is standing on end purport in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita Dhritarashtra inquired from his secretary Sanjaya what happened on the battlefield of Kurukshetra the entire study was related to the heart of Sanjaya by the grace of his spiritual master Vyasa he thus explained the theme of the battlefield. The conversation was wonderful because such an important conversation between two great souls had never taken place before and would not take place again. It was wonderful because the Supreme Personality of Godhead was speaking about himself and his energies to the living entity, Arjun, a great devotee of the Lord. If we follow in the footsteps of Arjuna to understand Krishna, then our life will be happy and successful. Sanjaya realized this, and as he began to understand it, he related the conversation to Dhritarashtra. Now, it is concluded that wherever there is Krishna and Arjun, there is victory. Text 75 Vyasa prasada chrutavan etad guhyam ahamparam yogam yogeshvarat krishnat Sakshat Kathayata Svayam By the mercy of Vyas, I have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjuna. Purport Vyasa was the spiritual master of Sanjaya, and Sanjaya admits that it was by Vyasa's mercy that he could understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This means that one has to understand Krishna not directly but through the medium of the spiritual master. The spiritual master is the transparent medium, although it is true that the experience is still direct. This is the mystery of the disciplic succession. When the spiritual master is bona fide, then one can hear Bhagavad Gita directly, as Arjuna heard it. There are many mystics and yogis all over the world, but Krishna is the master of all yoga systems. Krishna's instruction is explicitly stated in Bhagavad Gita. Surrender unto Krishna. One who does so is the topmost yogi. This is confirmed in the last verse of the sixth chapter. Yoginam api sarvesham. Narada 
is the direct disciple of Krishna and the spiritual master of Vyasa. Therefore, Vyas, Vyasa is as bona fide as Arjun, because he comes in the disciplic succession, and Sanjaya is the direct disciple of Vyas. Therefore, by the grace of Vyas, Sanjaya's senses were purified, and he could see and hear Krishna directly. One who directly hears Krishna can understand this confidential knowledge. If one does not come to the disciplic succession, he cannot hear Krishna. Therefore, his knowledge is always imperfect, at least as far as understanding Bhagavad Gita is concerned. In Bhagavad Gita, all the yoga systems, karma yoga, gyan yoga and bhakti yoga are explained. Krishna is the master of all such mysticism. It is to be understood, however, that as Arjun was fortunate enough to understand Krishna directly, so by the grace of Vyasa, Sanjaya was also able to hear Krishna directly. Actually, there is no difference between hearing directly from Krishna and hearing directly from Krishna via a bona fide spiritual master like Vyasa. The spiritual master is the representative of Vyasa Deva also. Therefore, according to the Vedic system, on the birthday of the spiritual master, the disciples conduct the ceremony called Vyasa Puja. Text 76 Rajan sam smritya sam smritya sam vadam imam adbutam keshavarjuna yo punyam hishyami chamuhur muhu O King, as I repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna, I take pleasure being thrilled at every moment. <laughs> Purport. The understanding of Bhagavad Gita is so transcendental that anyone who becomes conversant with the topics of Arjuna and Krishna becomes righteous and he cannot forget such talks. This is the transcendental position of spiritual life. In other words, one who hears the Gita from the right source, directly from Krishna, attains full Krishna consciousness. The result of Krishna Consciousness is that one becomes increasingly enlightened and he enjoys life with a thrill, not only for some time, but at every moment. Hmm. Okay. So spiritual life means thrilled at every moment. I like this definition. Text 77 Tatcha sam smritya sam smritya rupam atyad bhutam hare vismayo me mahan rajan hrishyami cha puna puna O King, as I remember the wonderful form of Lord Krishna, I am struck with wonder more and more, and I rejoice again and again. Purport. It appears that Sanjaya also, by the grace of Vyas, could see the universal form Krishna exhibited to Arjuna. Mm -hmm. It is of course said that Lord Krishna had never exhibited such a form before. 
it was exhibited to Arjuna only. Yet, some great devotees could also see the universal form of Krishna when it was shown to Arjuna. And Vyas was one of them. He is one of the great devotees of the Lord and he is considered to be a powerful incarnation of Krishna. Vyas disclosed this to his disciple Sanjaya, who remembered that wonderful form of Krishna exhibited to Arjun and enjoyed it repeatedly. Text 78 Yatra Yogeshvara Krishna Yatra Partho Dhanur Dhara Tatra Shri Rvijayo Bhatur Excuse me Tatra Shri Rvijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama Bhutir means exceptional power Bhutir Okay The last verse of Bhagavad Gita Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjun, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my opinion. <laughs> The Bhagavad Gita began with an inquiry of Dhritarashtras. He was hopeful of the victory of his sons, assisted by great warriors like Bhishma, Drona and Karna. He was hopeful that the victory would be on his side. But after describing the scene of, on the battlefield, Sanjaya told the king you are thinking of victory, but my opinion is that where Krishna and Arjun are present, there will be all good fortune. He directly confirmed that Dhritarashtra could not expect victory for his side. Victory was certain for the side of Arjun, because Krishna was there. Krishna's acceptance of the post of a charioteer for Arjun was an exhibition of another opulence. Krishna is full of all opulences and renunciation is one of them. There are many instances of such renunciation, for Krishna is also the master of renunciation. The fight was actually between Duryodhan and Yudhishthira. Arjun was fighting on behalf of his elder brother, Yudhishthira. Because Krishna and Arjun were on the side of Yudhishthira, Yudhishthira's victory was certain. The battle was to decide who would rule the world, and Sanjaya predicted, predicted that the power would be transferred to Yudhishthir. It is also predicted here that Yudhishthir, after gaining victory in this battle, would flourish more and more because not only was he righteous and pious, but he was also a strict moralist. He never, never spoke a lie during his life. There are many less intelligent persons who take Bhagavad Gita to be a discussion of topics between two friends on the battlefield. But such a book cannot be scripture. Some may protest that Krishna incited Arjuna to fight, which is immoral. But the reality of the situation is clearly stated. Bhagavad Gita is the supreme instruction in morality. The supreme instruction of morality 
is stated in the ninth chapter, in the thirty-fourth verse. Manmana bhava man bhakta. Manmana bhava man bhakta. One must become a devotee of Krishna, and the essence of all religion is to surrender unto Krishna. Sarva dharman parityajya mamikam sharanam vraja. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita constitute the supreme process of religion and of morality. All other processes may be purifying and may lead to this process. But the last instruction of the Gita is the last word in all morality and religion. Surrender unto Krishna. This is the verdict of the 18th chapter. From Bhagavad Gita we can understand that to realize oneself by philosophical speculation and by meditation is one process. But to fully surrender unto Krishna is the highest perfection. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. The path of regulative principles, according to the orders of social life and according to the different courses of religion, may be a confidential path of knowledge. But although the rituals of religion are confidential, meditation and cultivation of knowledge are still more confidential. And surrender unto Krishna in devotional service, in full Krishna consciousness, is the most confidential instruction. That is the essence of the 18th chapter. Another feature of Bhagavad Gita is that the actual truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. The Absolute Truth is realized in three features – Impersonal Brahman, Localized Paramatma, and ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Perfect knowledge of the Absolute Truth means perfect knowledge of Krishna. If one understands Krishna, then all the departments of knowledge are part and parcel of that understanding. Krishna is transcendental, for he is always situated in his internal potency. The living entities are manifested of his energy and are divided into two classes, eternally conditioned and eternally liberated. Such living entities are innumerable, and they are considered fundamental parts of Krishna. Material energy is manifested into 24 divisions. The creation is effected by eternal time, and it is created and dissolved by external energy. This manifestation of the cosmic world repeatedly becomes visible and invisible. In Bhagavad Gita, five principal subject matters have been discussed. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Material Nature, the Living Entities, Eternal Time, and all kinds of activities. All is dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. All conceptions of the Absolute Truth, Impersonal Brahman, Localized Paramatma, and any other transcendental conception exist within the category of understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Although superficially the supreme personality of Godhead, the living entity, material nature and time appear to be different. Nothing is different from the supreme. But the supreme is always different from everything. Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is that of inconceivable oneness and difference. This system of philosophy constitutes perfect knowledge of the absolute truth. So that's Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva. Inconceivable oneness and difference. The living entity in his original position is pure spirit. He is just like an atomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. Thus, Lord Krishna may be compared to the sun and the living entities to sunshine. Because the living entities are the marginal energy of Krishna, they have a tendency to be in contact either with the material energy or with the spiritual energy. In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energies of the Lord. And because he belongs to the superior energy of the Lord, he has a particle of independence. By proper use of that independence, he comes under the direct order of Krishna. Thus, he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta Purport to the 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of its conclusion. The perfection of renunciation. Haribo! We have completed Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Jai, jai, jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna.